items are designed to be very low maintenance once they're established, but getting them established can be a little tricky at first, particularly in getting the moisture level correct inside of our terrarium. When we first start, sometimes we have too much moisture in and we find it creates a fog on the walls of our container. And this one kind of has that fog forming. This is an indication there's too much water in there. So I wanna just open this one and let it air out for a day. Uh, and then I'll close it back up and see if I could get that fog to dissipate. What I do want are droplets of water to collect on the walls. As our terrarium becomes established and we manage that moisture level at the right level, what will happen is we'll end up with these rain cycles inside the terrarium where the moisture collects on the walls in droplets, not as a fog, and then it'll drip down back into our soil and start all over again. And that'll just maintain itself so we don't actually need to water uh, except for about every four to six months. And what we want to look for is as those droplets become less and less when we're not seeing as many droplets form, that's an indicator that it's time to add more water to our system. And we wanted to use a squirt bottle to water the terrarium so that we apply the water very slowly. Remember that our terrarium doesn't have any drainage at the bottom. So we really need to be careful to avoid overwatering in here. Otherwise we'll get water sitting, our plants sitting in that water and they'll have a root rot develop. So slow water and again at that time of watering it might take you a few days to reestablish that rain cycle. This one I want to air out for a little bit. You can see it's starting to fog a bit on the cover. So I'm going to just leave that open for a day and then I'll put the lid back on. I might try six or eight hours and then covering it again just trying to allow some of that excess moisture to dry off. Fertilizer is also not required in our terrarium because we want our plants to grow slowly. If we put a lot of fertilizer in there, they're going to grow too fast. However, if you notice that the foliage is starting to become a little chlorotic or pale, that's an indicator that the plants have used up any available nutrients and we can go ahead and fertilize, but we want to use one quarter of the recommended rate that we would see on the label. We also want to make sure we're paying attention to light. See this plant here? This is a creeping jenny. And when plants are not getting enough light, they get really leggy like this. I purposely placed this uh, in a darker area to try to demonstrate this, and it responded well. Look how long this inner node is here between the leaves. And this is not the ideal growth habit. We want more of a compact growth as we see over here. And so I might try replacing this plant with a different plant or I can try putting it into a higher light levels. For now I'm going to trim it back because I don't want this really long growth. I am also having a little bit of trouble with this plant. Um, there's a little bit of rotting on the stems and I'm not sure uh, what's happening. So. I'll continue to try to get this plant to work, but I might decide to just replace it with a different ground cover that's working more successfully. On occasion, you'll want to come in and prune inside your terrarium just to keep plants uh, at the desired size. Also, if you see any dying material, like here we have just one leaf that's starting to die, we don't want a lot of accumulated um, organic matter in our terrarium. So I'm going to just come in and prune that out. And that's the basic type of maintenance that we'll need inside our terrarium is occasionally removing any dead or damaged foliage. The other thing we want to monitor for is any fungal growth or disease growth. This is a closed environment which can be very conducive to disease development. That's why we started with very healthy material and we just keep an eye on it. We also want to remember to keep it out of direct sun because it'll get really hot in there and bake our plants. Uh, once we get that rain cycle established, we really don't have too much care, which is one of the great things about raising terrariums in the house. It's a nice low maintenance place to keep house plants. For more information on terrariums, turn to Oklahoma Cooperative Extension Fact Sheet, HLA 6438, terrarium.